All right, everybody, this uh, video here is going to be focused on how we solve a quadratic equation using square roots. And I assure you, this one will be much shorter in length than the factoring one. That factoring one got a little out of hand, and I apologize again. But anyway, uh, here, solving something with square roots is a skill we've already kind of been practicing a little bit from uh, time to time. Uh, the main thing that we really need to uh, think about as far as when we solve something with square roots is really this little bit right here, particularly that. Uh, that really anytime I take the square root of something, I do get two values, a positive value and a negative value. So that's one of the biggest uh, things that we need to pay attention to as we work on this. Okay, so uh, again take a look at the uh, instructions here. We're going to be discussing them as we go on. Again, one of the biggest things is when we take the square root, we got a positive and a negative uh, answer there. So, um, again, just pause this and write it down at your own leisure. There, we're going to continue moving on because uh, the rest of this stuff is, we, we're going to see it as we do it. Uh, these uh, examples here are relatively basic, nothing real crazy going on with them. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to try and solve this equation for B and uh, see what we wind up getting. Now here, this exponent is probably going to throw some of us off. We could factor it out and uh, try, or like we could expand that out, use FOIL and try solving it with the quadratic formula or with factoring. But because it's already set up where the expression is squared, that's actually a really good sign because it means we can solve it using square roots, which is a relatively easy thing to do. So this is going to give me uh, in parentheses the b minus 3 squared to be equal to 6. At this point, we've isolated the uh, expression that is squared. So in order to undo a square, I do a square root. Now here on the left side, the square root of anything squared is itself. So I'm going to be left with b minus 3. And here, this is where we do need to pay attention to a little bit. Now, unfortunately, the 6 is not a perfect square, and the 6 doesn't simplify. So we would just say plus minus square root 6. And that's the, the plus minus thing is something, again, that we really need to pay attention to. We're not just focused on the principal values anymore. And at this point, simply move the 3 over through addition, and I get 3 plus minus square root 6. And that would be the solution. Now, keep in mind, it looks like we wrote it as 1, but it's really two solutions, which tying into the last video, because the degree of the equation is 2, there should be two solutions. One is 3 plus the square root of 6, the other being 3 minus the square root of 6. We just have it written as uh, plus minus since it's so convenient to do so. Now this one here, I really like this particular example simply because of the fraction. Uh, it ties back into certain things that we've done when we take the square root of things, when we're simplifying them in fractional form. Uh, the difficulty level of this problem is toned down just a bit simply because we've already kind of gotten the square root or the, uh, the term that's squared, it's already kind of been isolated. Now at this point, uh, what we would have done is we're going to take the square root of both sides. What the book typically does is they kind of do something like that, where they would say, I'm going to take the square root of uh, that entire expression. And as I've explained in uh, previous examples, I personally don't care seeing it like that. A lot of students really don't care seeing it like that. Uh, we are going to go ahead and take the square root of both sides, but I'm going to say the square root of that over the square root of that. To me, visually, that just makes a lot more sense to show I have to take the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator. So on the left side, the square root of x2 or x plus 2 squared is just x plus 2, which is the whole point. That's what's nice about it. Now, in the numerator, the square root of 27, that will simplify to be 3 square roots 3 over 6. I'm sorry, not 6. I don't know what I'm thinking. That's an 8. Eight. And of course, we're going to say plus minus because we're taking the square root of something. So now kick the 2 over through subtraction, and I'm going to say x is equal to negative 2 plus minus 3 radical 3 over 8. 
and there we go that's about it now again keep in mind the fraction uh, the 3 over the 8 if that could have simplified we would have simplified it uh, but they don't so we can't so and that's the end of the problem nice and easy and guess what this is the last one I told you this was going to be much shorter than the last uh, last problem or the last video I should say start by isolating the radical or the square root part or the part that is squared I should say it's been a long day that's zero that's negative four so now I have a plus two squared is equal to a negative four now at this point we're going to take the square root of both sides and boom 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 hey look we got the square root that's we're trying to take the square root of a negative number so here in the instructions write the answers in exact form and if there are no real solutions so state well guess what because we're taking the square root of a negative number that tells you that there's going to be no real solutions so right off the bat we're going to say no real solutions okay but we can go ahead and finish this off because we know how to work with imaginary numbers we've been doing that quite uh, quite a lot recently so let's go ahead and finish this guy out so here I'm gonna get a plus 2 to be equal to a positive and a negative 2i move the 2 over and that will be a is equal to negative 2 plus minus 2i which again those are conjugate pairs every time I get one imaginary number as, a con as an answer its conjugate is also going to be a solution and that's it ladies and gentlemen we're done now in your examples in your uh, assignment you're gonna see a little bit more but nothing too crazy and uh, again hope you're all taking good notes if you have any questions please make sure you come see me for any help that you may need and see you in class soon